Now, I want to ask ourselves a question, should I follow my heart, as some people say? Is that a good idea? Should I follow my heart, as some people say? The answer is no. The obvious answer is no. Now, we're going to be looking at Jeremiah in chapter 17 and verses 9 and 10 in relation to the heart. What is God to say about our heart? The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? In other words, no. We shouldn't follow our heart, as some people say. Next verse says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the uh, reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. The heart is deceitful, that is, fraudulent, crooked, polluted. And don't forget, above all things, this is, we're not looking good. In the sight of God, our heart is deceitful above all things. We have a desperately wicked heart. And that is the problem. It's that that causes us to sin. And so these sins are taking us down to hell. God does not want you to go down to hell, and that's why I'm here, this Arvo to give you another opportunity of getting right with God by putting your faith in Jesus Christ. But you would realize your sinful condition before the Lord. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Because of that, we're heading down to hell, and God does not want you to go down to hell. And that's why I'm here, to bring you the message of hope and salvation through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. The one who died upon the cross can be your Saviour, uh, this afternoon yes I the Lord try the, uh, search the heart I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings and uh, so the heart here is the feelings oh, I should say go back a bit so above all things is desperately wicked it's fraudulent crooked polluted and desperately wicked that is incurable who can know it? The heart here is the feelings, the will, and even the intellect. We don't even know our heart, our own hearts. But God does, obviously. God knows all things. But, as verse 10 says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. This reminds me of Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. In other words, God is not made fun of. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Well, we know in this country when farmers get out there and sow wheat, you know, they sow grain into the ground, they expect that, you know, they're going to get some fruit, they're going to get some uh, wheat coming up. And obviously, they're going to reap. So sowing comes before reaping. But as you and I live in this world, we, we do various sins before God. We disobey God, we do the wrong thing, we disobey and do the wrong thing, which is sin, obviously, in God's sight. It's uh, not obeying God. And so therefore, because we are sinners, we're heading down to hell. And, you know, uh, sin must be punished. And that's why the Lord Jesus Christ was punished upon the cross. Not for his own sins, because he doesn't have any sins of his own. But he bore our sins in his own body on the tree. So he took our place on the cross so that you and I, if we put our faith, if we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we can receive the forgiveness for our sins. And then, and only then, we can enter into heaven the moment we die. God does not want you to die and go down to hell, and that's where we're headed. When we're born in this world, we're born as sinners, as I've said. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Sorry. 30 to 60 seconds before I, I yep. realised that listening to you was akin to being in hell. Well, and I'll tell you why. Yep. It's very simple. Because you think that human beings are wicked. Yep. Oh, I know God, he didn't create wicked people, mate. We're all beautiful, we're all lovely, and if you see people as wicked, you ain't no Christian, you're a fucker, you've got some... Yes, God created us perfect. Adam and Eve were perfect until they sinned. Sin has caused the problem. And so we are wicked in the sight of the Lord. We're wicked. You see, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. So we need to understand that, that if you're not saved, God classes us as wicked if you're not saved. 
Obviously, if you've been saved, you're not wicked anymore. You're called righteous in the sight of God. You have the righteousness of God given to you as a free gift because you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But when we're not saved, we are wicked. It's a hard pill to swallow, but it's the absolute gospel truth. We need to understand that. So if we are not sinners, we don't need a saviour. That's the whole point. And yes, that man was right. God did not create, a, a, you know, sinners. But he created Adam and Eve, and they were perfect until they had sinned. And that's important. We need to understand. And we cannot blame Adam and Eve, although sin did come enter into the world through Adam and Eve, and yet the Lord Jesus Christ... He's the son who is a king boxer. No, he talks about puppy dogs are puppy dogs. Instead of going, Jesus, he goes, the puppy dogs got power. Oh, yeah. And the power, yeah, that's what I'm showing you. Okay. You might yeah. like it. No, I don't actually, because it's not the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the so. Lord Jesus, but you've always oh. meant to keep the world happy. The world is in the really like, i tell you the truth, fucked up. Everybody's, 3,000 3, people got shot today again. Do they? Yeah. yeah Million. Oh yeah, yeah. Over Ukraine. Over in Ukraine? Ukraine. Okay, yeah. People talk about here, we should be fighting and living in on, but we don't. Yeah, well, the, the thing is, God wants us to be in heaven, and that's why I'm out here now. No, no. Another reason, what do you think about from the 80s and love? Where's the story in here about love? Love? Yeah. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, should not so, perish but have everlasting life. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hope church, yeah. 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 Anyway, I've come out here to give people hope. I've been listening to you for Yes. As a, uh, yeah. as he's, he's in it, but he hasn't got the power. You know what I mean? Okay. Like when they stand up and, and uh, we've got one photo on the corner in the city. He reads the Bible there, then he then he sings. Then he does what? Sings, reads it, yeah. whatever it says, then he, oh, oh, I'm a he sings it. Oh, yeah. Right, so, you're an age. Yeah, anyway, I'm here to yeah, preach, so I'll, I'll keep on. Yeah. Anyway, make my it, name's Dave, anyway. Yeah. Jason, make it cool, mate. Jason, was it? Yeah, Strong. Jason Strong. Yeah. yeah. Nice oh, to Jason meet you. Strong. Yeah. Nice yeah, to meet you. Yeah. God bless you. Yeah, we all need salvation, we all need to be saved, yeah. And we all need to be loved. Yes, that's right. That's why God sent his son in love for you and for me because of our sin. Everyone in the world. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so as it says in Galatians 6, uh, verse 7, Be not deceived, God is not mocked or made fun of. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. In Genesis 6, verses 5 to 8, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, now this is, don't forget about Noah's flood. Remember that the whole worldwide flood took place back in Noah's day. God was, God was uh, warning people through Noah, he said, look, Preach to the people and tell them, warn them, there's a big worldwide flood coming, get into the ark so you'll be safe, so you'll be uh, pre preserved through this big flood and you won't die. But unfortunately they didn't believe. And so only eight people were saved. And that's a very small percentage of the whole wide world. There was many people, there was probably thousands, even probably millions of people, yes, yeah, see you later, uh, upon the earth at that time. And yet they had rejected the word of the Lord through Noah, through Noah's preaching, he was a preacher of righteousness, trying to warn the people to flee for the wrath to come. God is angry with the wicked every day, and yet he is not willing that any should perish. And so God wants you not to perish in your sins. He wants you to be saved. And that's why I'm here this evening now, as it's getting a bit darker, that's why I'm here this evening, to bring you the message of hope and salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. And the only way you can get to heaven is through the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to understand there is only one way to heaven. There's not many ways to heaven. You know, there are many religious uh, organizations in the world. There are many uh, man-made religions in this world. 
But there's only one way to get to heaven, and that is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything else leads down to hell, my friend. You've got to understand that. The Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the way. The way. There are not many ways. There's one way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I wonder if you come in repentance toward God, that is, a change of mind, simply agree with God that you are a sinner and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. So it says here, it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him in his heart. The Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Mark chapter 7, verses 14 to 23. And when he, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him, but the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he saith unto them, Are ye so, uh, are ye so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing uh, from without entereth into the man, it cannot defile him? because it entereth not uh, into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the draught, purging all meats. And he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, remember we started with the heart of man, is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. So now he's... Um, going to give a list of a few things that come out of the heart of man. For from within, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, including abortion, yes, and euthanasia, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and defile the man. And of course it's not a full, a full list. There are many more things than this. This is just a few of them. The heart here is the thoughts or feelings of the mind. Now Proverbs 12 verse 5, The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceit. Proverbs 15 verse 11, Hell and destruction are before the Lord, how much more than the hearts of the children of men? Proverbs 15, verse 26. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but the words of the pure are pleasant words. Proverbs 28, verse 26. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely he shall be delivered. And again, the, the um, uh, title of the message is, Should I Follow My Heart, as some people say? A lot of people think that. It's all right, just follow your heart. But, says here, he that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. You know, it's foolish to trust in your own heart. But whoso walketh wisely he shall be delivered. Now, how can we walk wisely? By taking heed to the word of God, by understanding the, the judgment that's ahead of us and fleeing for, from the wrath which is to come. You see, God does not want us to perish and go down to hell and then eventually be, be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, the lake of fire and sulfur. He does not want that for any one of us. 
That's why he sent the Lord Jesus Christ to be our Savior. Now, Ezekiel um, chapter 36, verses 24 to 27. Now this is written to the Jews, for I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. For I, sorry, I will cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and will give you an heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. A new heart that is a fresh mind with a new will, and a new spirit will I put within you. When we come to the New Testament, we know that speaking of the Holy Spirit. So, a person that puts their faith in Jesus Christ as their Saviour, receives the Holy Spirit inside of their body, who gives us the power to live the Christian life. You see, we can't live the Christian life in and of ourselves. We need the power of God in the presence, the person of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who empowers us to live for God in an acceptable way. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 18 to 20. This is written to Christians. Uh, flee fornication. In other words, run away from fornication. Every sin that a man doeth uh, is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body, again, is speaking to Christians, to believers, that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. Sorry, uh, which ye have of God, and ye are not, yes, your own. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, that, uh, but he that committeth fornication uh, sinneth against his own body. For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body, and in your spirit, which are God's. And again, this has been to Christians, to believers. Of course, you can't glorify God in your spirit and in your body if you're not saved, if you're not a child of God, if you're not justified by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just made just as though you'd never sinned, basically. This is what God wants to do for you this evening. He wants to forgive you of all of your sins, no matter what you've done. Even if you killed someone, you can be forgiven of that sin. You know, the only sin that can't be forgiven is the sin of unbelief. If you die without the Lord Jesus Christ as your Saviour, well, there's no hope for you. It's too late. You'll be in hell the moment you die. God does not want that for you. And that's why we come out to give you another opportunity of getting right with God, of receiving forgiveness for your sins by putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's First Peter chapter 1 and verses 18 to 21, for as much as ye know that you were not redeemed, I know what redeemed means, it means bought